assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh welcome back to my channel i pray that you are all in the best of health and iman if you are new welcome my name is nafisa i am a muslima life coach and i support muslim women with relationship and mental health issues so if you're interested in being coached in those areas you can find me over on my website which i will leave linked in the description box down below but over here on YouTube, I make Islamic lifestyle as well as Dawa content. So if you're interested in that, then definitely make sure you subscribe. Over on Patreon, I coach women into womanhood. I teach everything to do with femininity and womanhood and how to be a wife before you actually get the ring. And also for women who are already married, how to enhance their marriage. So if you're interested in that, definitely check me out over on Patreon. So today we are talking about how to practically be patient. A lot of the time I myself have made videos here on YouTube talking and encouraging you guys about being patient during difficult times but sometimes we kind of find it hard to kind of put that into practice and what that looks like practically. So today I want to give you a few practical tips that will help you to be patient during difficult times. So I hope you guys find this video very very beneficial and without further ado let's begin these tips on how to be patient i think if you practice them they will change your life i i genuinely believe that they will change your life my first tip on how to be patient during difficult times is to actually enjoy some of the good times in your life as well when we're going through difficulties we have this habit of just focusing on the challenge and Funnily enough, with difficulty comes ease. So even though there are challenges in our lives, there are also things that Allah has blessed us with at the same time that we're having the challenge. It's just that it's difficult to focus on the blessings because we're too focused on the difficulty. So my first tip for you is to enjoy the good part of your life as well. I know you're having a bad day. You're really not feeling it today. But you know what? Somebody just invited you to a wedding. Somebody just invite, invited you to a get together at the home. Somebody invited you to come and break fast at their home. Go. Enjoy yourself. It's okay. You don't have to live in that place of sadness and sorrow and focusing on, on what's not going right. You don't have to live there all the time. You can move over to the place where you feel a little bit more lively, a place where you feel a bit happier, even if it's for a short period of time. Sometimes we lose our blessings because we don't even recognize our blessings because we're always focused on our goals, what we need to achieve, what we don't have, what's missing and how we can get it. Yes, it's partly human nature, but you know what? As people who are consciously um, choosing how we're going to live our lives, you get to realize that you have a choice. You can choose. So do the things that make you happy. Sometimes it's a nice and sunny day out there. Just go out in the park, buy yourself a nice ice cream, wear a nice dress, just stroll around. Have a nice picnic in the park. Like, go for a nice um, dinner invite with your friends. Enjoy some time with your husband. Enjoy some time with your children. Laugh with your kids. Play with your kids. Try to enjoy the things that are also good about your life right now. Despite the difficulty. Despite the challenge. Despite the pain. Look for the good in your life. And enjoy that. It's okay. Sometimes as believers, as Muslims, I don't know, I feel like some people have this perception that in order for you to be a righteous person, everything has to be all about hereafter, all about doomsday, we're not allowed to have any fun, we, you know, how dare you have fun, how dare you smile when you're going to pass away soon, come on, come on, Islam is about a balanced life, Allah does not tell us to focus on the negative all of the time, even in the Quran, even in Allah's sunnah, he mentions the rewards and he also mentions punishment. He doesn't just motivate us with everything is going to be punishment. He allows us to enjoy the good things in life that are halal. And that is the criteria. As long as what you're doing is halal, it's okay. Go on a nice holiday if you can afford it. Go somewhere good. Different scenery, different people, different environments sometimes just lifts your spirits a little bit. Sometimes, especially in the, in the winter time when Britain is like grey skies, is doom, is very depressing. 
you think of a nice holiday somewhere where it's nice and sunny it lifts up your mood get increased vitamin d sometimes it's just what you need just a short break it's okay it's okay you don't have to live in your place of misery 24 7 that's not making you to be a better muslim it's not practically for us to handle being patient we also should enjoy the good parts of our lives it will make our burdens a bit lighter so that is my first tip for you in terms of how to practically be patient is to enjoy positive and good aspects of your life of your living the way you live what you do do things that bring you joy as well even though you're going through hard times you will find it will make your burden a lot lighter on you the next practical way to be patient is to be in the company of those who have positive energy yes everyone has problems in their lives but we must say it's very true that at times some people in our lives are just they just carry a positive energy about them and it's so nice to be around those people you know the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam spoke about being careful who you surround yourself with, your companions, the people you surround yourself with. Because if your friend wears a perfume, you're likely to also have a sniff of that perfume. You know, you're likely to also attract some of that scent onto yourself. And it's the same thing with energy, the same thing with negative people. If you hang around ne negative people, and sometimes I know, it's very easy to be like, I'm going through a difficulty. I want to find people who are going through the same difficulty because maybe then they can relate. And that's all well and good, but you can't always be with those people who are going through those difficulties and only talking about those difficulties because even at times when you feel a little bit hopeful, just a reminder of that topic will bring you right back down again. And sometimes what you need is an uplifting of your soul. You know, you need to feel positive. You need to be in pos around positive people who have positive energy. So surround yourself with good people. Seek out happy people. Seek out people who are content because happy people doesn't mean don't mean that they don't have any problems in life and nothing's going on in their life maybe they just have a more positive outlook maybe they have a positive perception of the challenges that they are experiencing maybe they're just a lot more hopeful of Allah they trust Allah more they are in the remembrance of Allah super important surround yourself with people who are positive and who are in the remembrance of Allah because why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the remembrance of Allah indeed in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find rest whatever's bothering you is stressing you out when is this problem gonna end am I ever gonna get relief or is this it for me in my life you surround yourself with people who think about Allah, who contemplate about Allah, who remind you of Allah. And everything they say about Allah is very hopeful, is very positive. You're, you're bound to also absorb that energy. Eventually, you too will become a person who thinks positively about things, who, who says Alhamdulillah in all cases, who enjoys the nice things about life, who takes things in a much lighter way. And that will lead me on to the next thing. When you begin to surround yourself with positive people and you begin to see the good in your life, you're far more likely to be grateful. And then you become among the few because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about those people who are grateful that few of my slaves are grateful. Few. Because most of the time as human beings, we have this thing of just focusing on what's not right, what I don't have in my life. What about what the other stuff that you have in your life? If you can fight yourself, if you can fight your nafs to focus on the good and to be grateful to Allah for the good, you win. You win and you get to be a part of the few that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says are grateful to him. You get to be a part of those few. You know, when you think about the story of Prophet Ayub alayhi salam and when he was sick and how he was so shy to even ask Allah to grant him a cure because he remembered so much goodness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him. And he was embarrassed to just say, how can I just go with this once, this sickness? For him to go to Allah and ask Allah for cure, for this one difficulty of the sickness that Allah placed on him, he was too shy. Because he had money, he had wives, he had wealth, he had so much, he had children. He was blessed with so much. If we surround ourselves with people who think positively about life, 
who see what Allah has blessed them with instead of seeing what they don't have, then we ourselves are likely to also adopt the same mindset and it's only good for us. It's only good for us. So all is here. Whatever happens to a believer is good. If they are patient, it is good for them. If they are thankful, it is good for them. It is all good based on how we take it. And then that means that what? We can have that beautiful sabr. That beautiful sabr. That is what everybody's goal when it comes to going through trials. Is not just to be patient, but to have a beautiful patience. You can only have a beautiful patience if you can still see the good in life. If you can still see your blessings and say Alhamdulillah. If you surround yourself with positive people. If it leads you closer to Allah because you hang around with people who remember Allah much. And so that is ibadah. That's worship. Remembering Allah is ibadah. It's worship. So that means you get to elevate through your trials. Versus digging and sinking down deep through your trials. My next tip for how to practically be patient is do not take advice from people who don't consider Allah. This part is very important and I reiterate this whenever I make my videos and I'm trying to give you guys solutions of how to deal with different things. Whenever I have to mention counseling or therapy, I always say to you guys, go for a Muslim counselor, a Muslim coach, a Muslim therapist or go to an imam or go to somebody you can trust and somebody who will give you advice with the fear of Allah. Because sometimes what we do is we're going through difficulties, we're seeking a way out. And I'm not talking about like, you know, you need medication from the doctor and you saying your doctor has to be a Muslim. Like not that kind of stuff. Just things that advice, okay, not treatment advice but also treatment when it comes to like psychological treatments and things like that you want to make sure what you're engaging in is halal don't go for psychological treatments and they're doing hypnotherapy on you and they're doing all these other stuff that is not in line with islam you cannot see cure from places that is impermissible because even if you gain some help through those means you've lost your faith if it's shirk, you've lost your faith. If it's not shirk, you have sinned. And if the difficulty Allah placed in your life is a form of a test, and you're sinning as a result of that, that test, then you're failing your test. We all have to go through our trials. There is nobody on the surface of this earth who gets to live a life where they don't get tested. Oh, I love Allah so much. My life is just happy all the time. No, your life is not. We're all going to go through difficulties. We will all go through challenges. Guaranteed. Allah says, indeed, for sure, I will test you. With this, that and the other, for sure. I tested those before you until they said, when would the help of Allah come? When would the help of Allah come? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, indeed, my help is near. My help is near. So if you want Allah's help, everything you do has to be in line with faith. Don't go to people to advise you who don't consider Allah. Because if you take their advice, you will destroy your spirituality. You will destroy yourself in front of Allah. Remember why you're here on this earth. You are here to worship Allah. So any solution anybody's going to give you, it has to be with Allah in mind. And this is why we have to be careful. Sometimes a lot of us, we advise women who are going through challenges in their marriages especially and the only advice is just get out. Every time is get out. And I'm, I, I caution people from that. I'm not saying that there shouldn't be times where you should leave. Some relationships are really bad. Allah allowed divorce for a purpose because there are times when that is the best option. But we can't just be telling people to just up and leave their families on a whim. Where's the fear of Allah? You don't know that person's personal situation. You're just telling them to leave their husband. You break a family. There's no consciousness of Allah. If you're telling people, just up and go. Just leave your family, leave your husbands. Shaitan is most happy when a couple divorce. He's most happy. Whatever mini shaitan is able to get that job so that couple can divorce, that one gets a, a pedestal, get put, gets put on a pedestal. Because that's what shaitan loves the most. 
So the advice we give each other has to be coming from a place of fear of Allah. It has to. And if you're going through trials and difficulty and you take advice from people who don't consider Allah, they don't have the fear of Allah, be mindful you might be exposing yourself to making your situation far worse because if Allah becomes angry with you, instead of giving you aid and you coming out, you will end up in a much worse place because you're seeking help from the wrong places. And again, influence of people. We must be very, very careful with that. And this supports the idea of what I said earlier on about surrounding yourself with good people, people who remember Allah much. Because when they advise you, they're going to have deen in mind. So you're not only likely to be successful in this life, but also in the next. At least, at the bare minimum, at least your deen will not be compromised. At the bare minimum. What is the worth of suffering in this life to only go and suffer in the hereafter? What's the point? Like, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when I'm going through difficulty and they're like, oh, but you know, there's these other options. I'm like, I'm not open to none of that. I'm not about suffering twice. First and foremost, I don't want to displease Allah. And secondly, I'm not about suffering twice. It's already difficult in this world. It's already hard. I want to handle this right so at least I can look forward to when I leave this world, at least I'm looking forward by Allah's mercy that he will accept me. I don't want to be leaving this world thinking, oh my God, I'm going there to suffer as well because I've done X, Y, and Z. Please, please, in order for you to practice patience, you must take advice from people who consider Allah. It's very, very important. And finally, of course, I cannot make a video about how to be patient without telling you to ask Allah to help you to be patient. It's a gift. Patience is a gift. And you're not meant to do this without the help of Allah. That's not what this is about. I know when we're tested in this life, it's like you can't have help during your test. You can't. It's just all about what you know in your head and you doing exactly what you know and that's it. But Allah's tests are not like that. You're supposed to ask Allah to help you. It doesn't mean you're not patient. That's what you're supposed to do. It's acknowledgement of Allah's power over your life. And that is worship in and of itself. That's part of what Allah wants you. Allah wants you to know and to understand at the root that you are dependent on him. That he has power over everything. Right? So go to him. Make dua as much as you can. Always make dua and ask Allah for relief. It doesn't mean you're not patient. It's what you're meant to do. Go ahead. Ask Allah for cure. Go ahead. Ask Allah for provision. Go ahead. Ask Allah for help. Go ahead. Ask Allah for whatever it is that you want. That's what you're meant to do during trials. You're meant to do it. You're meant to do it. So do it. Okay. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make everything easy for us. May Allah help us to be good people. May Allah help us to uphold all the things that he's telling us to do, may Allah help us to understand that it's in our best interest. Finally, I also want to mention, it's important to always seek repentance. And it's important during this time of difficulty that you come closer to Allah by avoiding sin. You can't play God. He knows exactly what you're doing. Every night you're asking for help, but during the day you're sinning. The two don't match. The two don't match. If you're too relaxed during the time of goodness, at least during the time of evil, you need to, at least during the time of trials, you need to step up your game. Please avoid sin as much as possible so you can, you, you can be more hopeful of Allah's help. Because sometimes some of us end up in hopelessness because we know we have so much sins that we're doing. It's time to make a different decision. It's time to change. It's time to stop those sins as much as we can. We're human. We can never be perfect. But try. At least the major ones. Knock them off. And then the minor ones that are ha habitual, you do every day, knock them off. You need Allah right now. You can't afford to continue living like this. Come on. May Allah make it easy for all of us. I hope you have found this video very beneficial. If you have, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. And leave me a comment in the comment section down below and share this video with anyone, any person that you feel this video will be helpful to. May Allah reward you for your efforts also in his course by sharing this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in my next one. Assalamu alaikum.